Luther always get appearance and reality. Uh, I think there, ropes, here one monk, here one monk, here one monk, with hair. <laughs> The Tibetan Photo Project got its start in Northern California when monks on a cultural tour made a stop in Mendocino. And it was there that I was introduced to a program for sponsoring monks living in exile in India. When I sent my first letter, I also sent along a disposable camera. And I had no idea what I was going to get back. I had no idea what this was going to take. After about six weeks, the first correspondence returned. And this was when I was going to learn that it was going to take a long time for most correspondents to, to make the full cycle in India. Taking his first photos with a recyclable camera, Jamyang Norbu gave the Tibetan Photo Project its start. Jamyang's personal story is representative of the plight of thousands of Tibetan monks living in exile. Under the watchful eye and heavy-handed influence of the Chinese government and military, he was unable to get either a traditional secular or monastic education inside Tibet. The Chinese had also destroyed all but 13 of 6,000 monasteries that made up much of Tibet's education system. Joining a few young countrymen, he took the treacherous walk over the Himalayas into Nepal and moved onward to the Tibetan colonies in southern India. Now in his 30s, Jamyang is two-thirds of the way through a 20-year program at the Drepung Monastery that will give him the equivalent of a PhD in Tibetan Buddhist philosophy. When he was introduced to his first camera, Jamyang sent us a letter saying he had no experience and the Tibetans had no culture based in photography, leaving him at a loss at what to photograph. There have been thousands of beautiful portfolios, books, exhibits, and films on the Tibetans, but all from the preconceptions of the Western eye. Jamyang's question gave us a clear picture of the mission of the Tibetan Photo Project, and when we wrote back we provided a few elementary tips about lighting. But regarding the content of his photographs, we asked Jamyang and the monks at Jaipung to take pictures of what they felt the West should know about their lives. Not long afterwards, Parade Magazine reported to 16 million readers on the Tibetan Photo Project, and they called the works by the monks in exile rewarding. Mm -hmm.